All right, let's look at the formation of aryl diazonium salts and some of their uses in synthesis. And so we see here that amino substituted benzenes or anilines, uh, most of those can be converted into aryl diazonium salts. That's what we see here. We've got that N2 plus group. We're going to look at just what that looks like in a moment. Um, that N2 makes a good leaving group, nitrogen gas, um, in nucleophilic aromatic substitution. So our reagents here, sodium nitrite, HCl and zero degrees because these salts are unstable at uh, room temperature and higher. So we want to keep them chilled. All right, let's look at the mechanism. So um, if we look at our nitrite ion here, um, it can be expanded and we can draw this out using our um, Lewis structures. And so if we look, We've got a lone pair on nitrogen, an NO double bond, and an O minus. Well, in the presence of a strong acid like HCl, we can protonate the negatively charged oxygen. And then we can further protonate that negatively charged, formerly negatively charged oxygen with another equivalent here of acid. And now we've got a good leaving group water, H2O, and similar to what we saw with nitration, we form um, the ion here by that leaving group leaving, and that leaves us with NO+. Plus, okay, and so what that's going to do, just like other Lewis acids when they react with anilines, like with the Friedel-Crafts reaction, aluminum chloride, we're going to see the lone pair on nitrogen react with this ion, okay? So we've connected here. At this point, we can expand this out and show some base from solution here grabbing this proton and deprotonating, sending, <coughs> excuse me, our resonance contributor here, or sending our um, electron pair to the more stable position on oxygen. Nitrogen here has a plus one formal charge, making four bonds. Same in the second uh, structure here. From there, our O minus can react with either HB, uh, HCl or another um, protonated species from solution here. And we're going to see. This protonated oxygen structure and at this point we can remove a second proton sorry lost the nitrogen there let me get that back there we go we can remove this proton from nitrogen Get our lone pair here and then we can protonate make a good leaving group out of oxygen make it into water here our hydroxyl group keep everything where we can see it here i'll make a turn we've got our good leaving group And now we can simply form our triple bond, kicking off the leaving group. And we've now got our diazonium ion. OK, 
counter ion is most likely chloride given the presence of um, our HCl in solution, okay? So ultimately here, um, we get our diazonium ion from our aniline, and now what do we do with it now that we've got it? We said it was unstable except at low temperature, so we're not going to isolate this thing. We're going to use it immediately, so that's one of the things we need to do is use it immediately upon making it, and some of the common things that we can do are these first three um, reactions are call Sandemeyer reactions. Okay, so we're going to see um, copper salts being used to substitute these um, diazonium salts and copper 1 bromide and chloride being our first here. And so these Sandmeyer reactions are just going to substitute our diazonium with nucleophilic aromatic substitution kicking off N2 as a leaving group. Okay, so we attack, resonance goes around the ring and then kicks off the leaving group as it reforms aromaticity, as we saw in the other video on nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Same mechanism here with our substitution. We get three reactions here, three substitutions. Okay, to make our three new compounds. What else can we do? Well, we can make an iodo uh, benzene using potassium iodide, kicking off N2 every time. Again, these are byproducts, so I don't need to see them um, on uh, my line reactions on exams, but again, they are formed. It helps drive the reaction to completion. Then we see the Shimon reaction here. Apologies for the pronunciation. I've only read about it, never been to a conference and heard it mentioned. So, again, apologies if that's an issue. But we get our fluoro substituted benzene. We want to make phenols. We can do so in acidic or neutral conditions. I guess Lewis acidic conditions, but not protic conditions. Again, sometimes I'm drawing resonance in the benzene with a circle, it's a little faster not indicating there's a difference in these two. I could have easily drawn the circle there as well. So if you haven't seen me in class do that, that's all I'm doing there. Uh, we can make phenol, do the substitution. And we can also do the same thing here with copper uh, oxide and copper nitrate and water. Make our phenol. Different conditions could be more appropriate for um, certain reagents, so always good to have an option. We can also remove the group altogether, returning to benzene. Not so useful for just a mono substituted group, but replacing with that hydrogen, um, kicking off the nitrogen with hypophosphorus acid here. Kicking off our byproduct nitrogen gas. So why are we doing all this? Well, um, the synthetic utility of these diazonium salts is late addition um, of a maybe ortho para director after placing a group in the meta position. So how we would get there, just starting with benzene, we could start with a nitration And from there, we could add chlorine in the meta position using our highly deactivated ring, our, our strong deactivator, the meta director nitro group. And then we can reduce that nitro group. To an aniline, we can make our diazonium salt
and we've got to use it immediately, like we said. There we've got it. It's in the meta position. We can do that Sandmeyer reaction, replacing that um, N2 plus there. Yes, we do have that counter ion here, diazonium salt. Replace that nitrogen with a chloride. Okay, so we end up with two ortho para directors meta to each other using the diazonium salt. All right. Well, we can also um, have the disappearing directing group. All right. And this puts us with three chloros meta to each other. We go through the same process of nitration. But this time we're going to reduce first to make our strongly activated ring the aniline. The strongly activated ring can be reacted with um, an excess of chlorine, at least three equivalents, sorry, thinking threes there, chlorine the molecule, Cl2, three of them, without a catalyst because it's a strongly activated benzene, halogenation proceeds without the need of a catalyst. And so we get ortho and para substitution because of how rapid the substitution is. It just goes. And from there, we can create our diazonium salt. Geared up to leave now. We just saw how we can use H3PO2 to remove that N2 group and create just a hydrogen there, the substitution, um, our disappearing directing group there. All right, so a couple of things we can do. Uh, we can also make azobenzenes through an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. And we're going to notice here that the, um, we said para and trans are going to be the major product. And so that's because of the bulky nature of our electrophile phenol here. We're going to substitute. And then the trans comes from the fact that these N2 bonds and azobenzenes uh, can be cis or trans. And predominantly, when sterics is the only consideration, the trans uh, isomer, stereoisomer, is preferred. So this is an azobenzene with this linkage. Modifying the groups on benzene can actually change the um, absorption properties, making these good candidates for dyes. So they are, um, there are several patents and ancient dyes based on azobenzenes. Okay, so it's a whole field of research that's um, um, well explored, but there's still a whole lot out there that could be done with these azobenzene dyes. The mechanism, just to point out, is just electrophilic aromatic substitution. Let's highlight the nitrogen here. You may see that plus charge on nitrogen. That's our electrophile. And so the first step of our electrophilic aromatic substitution of our highly activated rings only, because we need this to occur at low temperature. So only our um, strong donating groups, strongly donating will strongly activate this. And so we will see the attack occur as so. Um, to create our intermediate. This is just like if we were doing a nitration. Except now we've got an azobenzene. Use phenyl there to, to abbreviate that benzene ring. And then our base from solution comes back in. Restores aromaticity, pulling that proton off, and we've got our azobenzene. 